In this video, I'm going to use a new feature to Enforce, which allows us to extrude features and also extrude circles to create um, meshes that we can then use to tidy up point clouds or if you wanted to export as IFC files. So I'm going to start just by putting a simple uh, center line down here so I can put a section through the job. I'm doing all this in Enforce Designer. So I'm going to go to Digitize. So let's look at the code CL. Select points, and we just say furthest for the time being. Put it in a 2D view, so I'm looking down on it. So I'm going to put a point in sort of there, and a point in over here. This is just to give us a, some sort of a center line to then push the section center line down. Take it off the wall invisible. Okay, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to start a new section. Okay, so. Here is uh, an outline of what we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to use this to start my center. Uh, to, I'm going to use this view here to draw a profile, which we can then push down this part of the scan. So I'm going to digitize. Uh, use a color setup called TP for a tunnel profile. Select points. Just going to fluctuate the width. Okay, that's all I need. So, I'm currently set to locking to the points. I'm going to hit plane projections so all of these points line up in, in a line, so I don't have to worry about snapping them to a feature afterwards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say start here. And with the show distance turned on, okay, I'm assuming this is going to be circular in some way. Uh, I'm not going to put the points too close together because I can infer the, cir the circularity in a minute. Under sections now, I go to elevation from section. That gives me this. I obviously don't need to worry about the height, so I can turn the heights off. And I'm now going to go curve between. I'm going to go from there to there, which gives me that. And I'll just close it. There we go. So let's just check and see how that looks. So I'm going to hit refresh. And there you go. As you can see, it nicely snaps to the scan now. Now what I need to do is turn this into a profile. To do that, I need to create more points along the surface of this because at the end of the day, we're going to be creating triangles and triangles aren't curved. So we need to create enough points to pick up the curve accurately enough. So I'm going to get identify in between. I'm going to go from there to there. And I'm going to say maximum distance and let's say have a point every half a meter. Okay, so that's given us a point every half a meter. So I have my profile. When I send this profile down the center line, I need to make sure that I'm doing it centered on the data. Okay, so I'm going to split this bottom segment here into two so I can get my center line. So under dens densify, I'm going to go to segment, click that, number of segments to two. And there we go. So I now I've got that point in the middle. I need to take this and turn it into a block. So I'm going to go to list. I'm going to say add by feature line, which is all going to be all the points on that feature. I'm going to hit to block and it says indicate the origin. So this is the point that I'm going to extrude it along. I'm going to right click that. I don't need to worry about direction. And we'll call this profile one. Okay, that. So to reverse this now, I go points. Transfer the elevations reverse, it goes back to looking at it in this view. And if I flip to the project manager, here you can see a profile ready and waiting to be used. So that's one of the profiles. I'm now going to do it. So this part of the scan. Okay. So let's suggest, let's move it to a point where we can say, yeah, that's a good shape. So that's as good as any. And we'll repeat the process. Okay, back to there. There's my profile, my rough profile sketch. Do the same thing again under sections, elevation from section. There's my larger profile. Now I don't need this other one in here, so I'm going to delete that. So I'm just going to go to lines, hit delete. Okay, now I'm going to recurve it. I need to close this feature, intensify it. OK, 
Okay, put this in a list and turn it into block. So, origin there, right click, profile two, I'll delete it because I know I don't need it anymore. Earth transformation, and do that process one more time for here. So what I need to do here is I need to actually find the center point here that I'm going to generate in a minute uh, in the 3D view so that I can send this profile down it. I could perhaps try and lock it to some CAD detail in the in the section view, but to make it as accurate as possible, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a best fit circle from some of these points. That will give me my center point, which I can then drop onto this segment here. So to do that, I'm going to have to design, get a circle fit. Now this is a, a best fit circle algorithm. Um, the points aren't that far apart, so clustering five meters should be plenty. Um, so we'll just leave the defaults as they are for the time being. MHC1 is just a manhole, uh, but it will draw a circle, which is all I want to get at the moment, because all I want is the center point. And we'll just say use these top points here. There you go, you see now, there's a circle, and there's my center point. So what I need to do now is to insert that point into this feature. To do that, I'm going to use the points project tool. So I'm going to go to points, I'm going to go to project, I'm going to project to a line segment, which will allow me to then burn, and I'm going to create a copy of the point in the segment. So then it says indicate line feature, so that's that one, indicate point, that one. There you go, so that's created the point now, because that was the closed segment, it's opened it again. All I need to do is just go to lines, close, and do that. But that is my center point, okay? So I can now get rid of the points I don't need. So I'm going to go delete. So I'm going to do that. Get a list. And this is going to be my last profile. So I'm going to block. That's my origin point. And I'm going to right click. And I'll call this one profile three. Okay. And now I can delete that as well. What I need to do now to calculate the lines so that I can send the profiles down that line and that it correctly matches the scan. So to do that, I'm going to go to the scan again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the section to the very front. Okay, now in a very similar way to what we were doing before with the circle, I'm going to do is I'll move the scan data to here. Okay. And I'm going to go back digitize, change my code to center line. And I'm going to select find circle. And there we have a circle. Don't need to do anything else. Just press digitize. And then I'm going to move that to just before where the Tunnel profile changes, just right click to find adjust, hit find circle again. Okay, so that's not quite right because it's got some data in it I don't want to use. I'm going to hit the fine and I'm just going to say use the top half and there you go. It now gives me a better circle using the points within that region and I'm going to press digitize. So that's my first one. New and repeat. Even though this isn't circular, it will move polygon. The top half will be, and all I'm looking for for the time being is a center line. Remember, because I don't have that center line, I've got to create it. So, find polygon again. Just using the top section. Okay. So all I'm looking for is the center line. I know that's not the radius, but I'm just looking for the center line. So we'll hit digitize. Move it on again. Right click in the section view and just drag it so it ever so slightly uh, adjusts. Hit find circle again. And digitize. Okay, so if I would just do always visible, there's my center line there. And I'll do 
the same thing now for this main center section. So back to the model view. I now have my I have my overall center line here, which is my rough one, which is just this one here. And then I have that section, which is that center line, and then the next two sections, these are their center lines. What I need to do now is just find out where that line crosses the center line of the cross section of the profile, and that will be my seed. That'll give me my point where I need to start seeding these profiles. So slide it back to the beginning again. A section thicker. Okay, so I'll do this first one here. So I'm going to go digitize, and I'm just going to use something else that draws a code, draws a draws a line. Sorry, something else that draws a line. So I'm just going to say BB. Normally, bottom bass, I've got all I need is a line, and I'm going to hit select points, and we'll say one point there, and another point there, and for new. And to move that to here. And repeat. A point there. And a point. Say so there. If I now look in plan, I have this situation. I have this is my first center line. Or rather, this is the bottom of my first profile that I just sketched, and this is the bottom here of the second. So, the first thing I need to do is make, make sure they cross. So, I'm going to extend the point forward, extend the point forward, make sure that crosses. I now need to create that point there. So, that's under segment, segment intersection. Now, I want the point on this feature, uh, but I need it. So I need it at the level of this string, okay? And to create a point on the level of this string um, where that crosses it, because that's my center line point that I've used as my origin for the profile. So I'm gonna click that first, then click that. So I want the height based on the first segment, and I'm only gonna do it on the first feature. I don't want two points. So that gives me that there. And I need to extend here, so Alt M, extend. Move on length, and by the way, just make sure you just move the points so it doesn't create more points. Okay, then I'll um, same intersect, and I want the point on that string, but where that intersects it in plan. Okay, so I can now delete that line and create a new based on that point. So I'm going to go to features create, obviously, it's directional. So Code that one, code that one, right click, CR1. And that is my center line point. If I go back, so that is my center line string. So if I refresh in here, you can see here, that is the point where I need to seed. And that's the other point there. So I, in a minute, I can pass my profile down that string and it should line up perfectly. I need to repeat that process for the other two sections. So I'll just do that now. Okay, and just so I don't get confused, I'm going to quickly recode, recode this the rough center line to something completely different. Got a TB. That way, I won't get confused in a minute. So I have one section there, which is a smaller one, the second one, and the third one. So now assign those to the strings. Okay. What I'm going to do, rather to now assign these to the profiles, I'm going to go to the design menu and we now use template circle. We could use, sorry, and we use a, a template rather than the circle. If the sections were perfectly circular, we could just use a circle and then, of course, we're just asking for a radius. But I don't have any of that because obviously they're not perfectly circular. So I'm going to use the template and go to profile one. I want to form the triangles and say that's my first one. Okay. And this one here, whoops, sorry. Then run the command again, this time profile two for that one. I don't know if the vertical profile of the, of the main tunnel section is curved at all, so just in case it is, I'm just going to go to lines, identify uh, all, that string, and we will basically say 
uh, maximum distance, let's say every five meters. And what we do is we're going to model interpolate onto the point cloud, uh, lowest level every 200 mil, or rather in, within 200 mil search radius. <clears throat> so that should guarantee that we get points at enough regular intervals so that it doesn't matter uh, if it if it curves at all, we'll still be able to pick that up and it'll match the curve of the, it'll match the tunnel profile more accurately. So I'm going to go to get the design again, template. Okay, okay. To see how that fits under the sections option, I'm going to use slice models and recalculate. And what you should see now, if I zoom in. There's the profile. Okay, obviously it's straight. Uh, now the colors obviously are, uh, I need to change that. So what I'm going to do is you know, click on that. And let's say, let's go for cyan. Okay, now so Enforce now inverts the color for me. As you can see, that lines up well. And that section will update in real time as I drag. So there's that profile. Okay, so that all looks pretty good for me. We'll make the surf, make the model height shaded. That's fully exportable uh, as an IFC. If you wanted to go out to IFC, all you need to do is go to 3D models, export models, hit export, and if I say select IFC, I'll just put this on my desktop so we can prove to check it works in a second. Okay, and I've just quickly jumped out and uh, switched to uh, an online IFC viewer, and I've just imported the uh, tunnels IFC that I exported from Enforce, and as you can see. There is a, a pretty good representation of what we've got in Enforce, but as an IFC file. I exported this as IFC, but um, you could obviously have exported it to a OBJ file or an FBX as well. Um, they're also supported. Okay, now, so back into Enforce. Okay, now, one of the reasons for doing this was so that we can clean up the point cloud. So I'm going to cancel the section for the time being, turn the point cloud back on. So to begin the process of tidying up the scan, I'm going to add a group, and I'm just going to call this one Clean Tunnel. Because in a second, if I go to Tools Group by Model, what I'm going to say is, uh, I'm not going to do vertical distance, because otherwise it wouldn't work at all. It needs to be perpendicular to triangles. I'm not going to create any groups. I just want to keep it as one group. The target group would be Clean Tunnel, and I'll use the default value there of uh, 50 mil for the time being. So what we're basically going to do is any data within 50 mil of this surface that you see here that we've created, i.e. this surface, any data within 50 mil of that perpendicular to the surface is going to be moved into the group called Clean Tunnel. So I'm going to just hit Apply. OK, now that has finished, hopefully. If I right click to cancel the tool, if I hide the model, look down the pipe, look down the tunnel, sorry, and untick assigned, or rather untick unassigned, it should turn off the noise. That's with the noise. That's with that. I could obviously enlarge the um, search radius. Uh, I could obviously also um, densify the center line so I can pick up the profile of the pipe a little bit better, which otherwise uh, would mean I wouldn't get those holes there perhaps. But as you can see on the whole, that's worked reasonably well. Okay, we could actually go on and actually use, so if I was to put that to wireframe, if I turn this off, let's see. Um, if we wanted to, we could actually use this um, wireframe model. We could use this model here to actually check uh, the deviation from this surface, but I've uh, manually created this surface, so it's probably not valid. If we had the proper profile, we could actually send that down the center lines, and then we could obviously then check the point cloud for um, check the point cloud to see how close it was to the intended design. To complete this presentation, I'm going to quickly show a new feature which has literally just been added, which allows us to use two strings for cant changes for train profiles. So what I'll do is I will go to design, and I will go to template. And this new option has just been added where I can use two features. 
Uh, if it's if the points are in pairs like they are here, it'll then just project straight across the pair. Otherwise, if you don't tick that, it will then project to the other string and calculate the uh, the count automatically, i.e. the the tilt. Uh, and I'm going to select tube profile. Okay, click that track, go to that track. So that's created the model for me. Here I have my view set up, and as you can see, if I now turn the point cloud off, there is my train envelope. And if I turn the point cloud back on, and slice the model, you can see if I tick live update, there we go. As I move my section through the job, it lives updates. So I can see in real time how the envelope of the train interacts with the profile of the tube. If you don't want to see the outline, if I untick show path, and what I've got here turned on is the section plane distance. If I turn that off, it um, won't mark where it is. So what I'm going to do to try and help make that a bit more easy to see is put this to a wireframe. Turn the lines off. Okay, so just got the wireframe in there now. And then if I, display them at, if I put the display modifier back to section plane distance, what it does is it colors the data which is close to the plane. So that allows you to see, and if I flatten it up a bit, say 0.5, and then I just move it down, let's go advance. You can see how it moves as it goes. So you can see where you are and also how the, how the section interacts with the platform and the tube data at that time. Obviously this is uh, exportable as well as an IFC file or an OBJ uh, for analysis in other pieces of software. And it's our intention at some point to be able to plot clearance around these envelopes as well to the point cloud. And that concludes this presentation.